everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Save the Track Bike presented by The Bicycle Broker. On today's episode, we got Max Pratt from Team Pratt Frameworks, Phil Wood. Um, well, I'm Max Pratt, um, founder of Pratt Frameworks and uh, team manager and mechanic for the uh, fixed gear crit team, Pratt Phil, uh, which is an all-women's um fixed grit team starting in 2019 and they'll all be riding um, exclusively handmade bikes coming out of the Pratt framework shop. Let's talk about your history with uh, building bicycles and your history with bicycles in general. What got you interested in it? Um, Yeah. What's your history with riding? Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's funny. I didn't learn to ride a bike until I was 15 and then, um, at 16, I started working as a bike mechanic in the kind of Boston area, um, in Cambridge at Cambridge Bicycle. And then, um, when I moved down to Providence, I started working at uh, Dash Bicycle. Um, so I don't know, I kind of, I started fixing my bikes before I started really riding them. And then as I was a mechanic and started to get more into it, I started to ride more. Um, and then, uh, ended up going to Rhode Island School of Design for furniture design. And uh, there I learned to weld and, you know, do a lot of metal fabrication um, and kind of figured why, why not try building bikes, you know. Um, I had a couple of friends who did it and I knew, you know, I knew Brian Chapman, of course, also in Rhode Island. Um, and gave it a shot with a first couple of bikes and really kind of jumped into the first bike I made. Actually, I brought to the Builder's Ball, um, which is a handmade bike show in Boston. Um, And from there, kind of the year after, started to really get going and get on my feet. And then um, this past year, went back to Builder's Ball as a sole exhibitor with, you know, five bikes and, uh, and, and now here we are. I'm kind of curious as like a personal aside, what inspired you to go into designing furniture? Like who are some of your inspirations? Cause right when you said that, I kind of like some of the aesthetics of your company and the paint jobs and stuff, like kind of reminded me of like <laughs> just how design oriented your company is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, my dad, uh, was a, was a machinist and, a, and an engineer and he, um, so I kind of grew up around, around making things and fixing things. And, um, I knew that I wanted to do something with my hands. And so I kind of ended up at, at, uh, RISD, Rhode Island School of Design, um, not knowing what I wanted to do, but, uh, they have a really strong furniture department, particularly in, in relation to like, uh, quality craftsmanship. And that was something that I really kind of wanted to improve on. And so going from there, you know, it, it was more of a a context in which to work and then ended up kind of falling in love with furniture making and furniture design as a, as a, as a practice similar, I think to bicycle making and kind of, you know, they're both very detail oriented. Um, they both are very labor intensive and they're kind of, uh, the end product is something that you interact with pretty intimately. Absolutely. So the first time I heard about your company was I've had Jocelyn on the podcast and then, you know, she had her bike get stolen and then, and then something happened to where, you know, you guys connected and now she has this like super gorgeous you know track bike with like this amazing paint job so (laughs) yeah so let's talk a little bit about how that came about yeah yeah so i mean jocelyn's um jocelyn's bike got stolen i didn't really know jocelyn very well but i knew um because she she worked at providence bicycle um and so she knew uh mitch who was the graphic designer for that bike and he was the, is also the graphic designer for Dash Bicycle, where I was a mechanic. So I knew Mitch and then uh, kind of saw, I think he reposted on Instagram 
a photo of her bike getting stolen. And I was like, oh, that's such a bummer. Her bike got stolen. And I was just getting into being track bikes and kind of like uh, testing out the waters. Um, I was doing a couple of track bikes for other other people who had bought geared bikes for me in the past and getting good feedback. So I kind of reached out to her and said, hey, you know, do you want to, if you're looking for a new bike, let me know. And, um, of course she jumped right on it <laughs> and, uh, and she said, you know, I'd, I'd love to, uh, have a bike made, but you know, I want Mitch to do the graphic design and I knew Mitch already. So I was like, absolutely. And then, um, I mean, they both kind of took it from there. She knew, uh, exactly what kind of, you know, build she wanted on it, um, and they both had a, a great idea for the for the paint, which was kind of inspired by you know the Memphis design movement and Memphis furniture. So that's another connection there to that. Um, and then you know, kind of halfway through the process, she's like, "Well, you're building me this really nice race bike, but I, uh, you know, I'd love to race with other people too. Why don't you start uh, a fixed year team?" And so, you know, none of it really would have come about if not for Jocelyn and her bike getting stolen. Yeah. So let's talk about what are the plans for the team and who's on it. And yeah. What are you excited about? What are the bikes going to be like? Uh, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, the team, uh, the team started out pretty small. We knew we wanted three people and we had, um, me and Jocelyn kind of like, uh, connected with um danny morsehead who uh, went to brown and so i knew her from when i was on the RISD cycling team and so um i reached out to her and she said you know absolutely and then um we reached out to uh, sam fox who was on the shindle howard gates team previously and danny and sam ended up going to red hook milan and racing together on the shindle howard team danny is a guest rider and then you know uh Shortly after that, Danny, it was Danny's first fixed gear ride. Um, shortly after that, Danny went to Red Bull last stand, of course, and, uh, won the women's race, which was pretty exciting for us. Um, because we kind of, you know, we were excited to have her on our team. And so we kind of had the team figured out pretty early, at least the three of us, um, or the four of us. And then from there, we started to pick up sponsors. Um, Phil Wood, was kind of the first first company to get involved um and you know we have a really good relationship with them so we're using you know uh hubs from them headsets seat collars uh the whole kind of kit that they offer cogs um which is really exciting because you know they're they're a name that's kind of more in the high-end uh custom market but not so much in the the track racing market um or fixed gear racing market Um, so they're excited about that and we are too. And then, you know, a lot of our other sponsors kind of came about through, um, personal connections. You know, Danny knows one of the folks who worked at Princeton and Carbon Works and we kind of ended up getting involved with them. And now, you know, we, we know all of them very closely. Um, and they're working, you know, closely with us. So we're getting, you know, as far as the bikes, we'll have, you know, uh, cockpits from SimWorks and wheels from Princeton and Phil and those will all get, you know, painted to match and everything. Um, we're really going for a more kind of retro, uh, velodrome bike look kind of, uh, reminiscent of old, uh, Kieran track bikes, but, uh, in a kind of a modern context. What do you, what attracted you to starting the fixed gear team and why when jocelyn brought that up were you like yeah let's do that (laughs) (laughs) well um i don't know it's uh i i try to not say no to too many things (laughs) (laughs) um but i think the it's a it's a great excuse to to get a lot of people you like in the same place and, um, it's a, it's a great way to build relationships with companies. So, you know, as a result of, of this relationship with Phil Wood, for example, most of my bikes are now built with, with Phil parts. And that's kind of, uh, it's a great way to make connections in the industry and also to kind of get, get the name out there for me and for all the kind of smaller companies 
um, like Phil and Princeton Carbon Works and Simworks and, you know, companies that aren't huge, big brand names, um, but that are, you know, kind of making really high quality products in the industry. What's your relationship with writing right now? Um, I try to ride as much as I can. I live very close to a bike path, but, uh, I'm not really racing, mostly kind of mostly working, <laughs> but, um, you know, as much as I can, I ride, uh, whenever I'm out in California, I ride with, you know, Danny and, um, other friends in the industry and people, people who I can get to know. Um, but yeah, mostly kind of, uh, a weekend warrior at the moment. <laughs> That's reasonable. I'm at that point too. Yeah. Especially like, you know, when it gets dark at like four thirty, it's hard to ride after work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's funny. If you had to pick a soundtrack for, for the team. <laughs> oh, geez. What, what, what would you go with? Um, that's a good question. I would say that uh, I would say that I would let Jocelyn pick the soundtrack. But if I were to pick something, you know, it would have to be something. Uh, it would have to be something new, made in the last twenty years, that uh, that really embodies old music. But that's tough. <laughs> Well, how about a more direct one? What are you listening to right now? <laughs> right now, I've been listening to a lot of James Brown. Oh, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's probably my favorite answer I've gotten so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go with that then. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been on a Chuck Berry kick lately. That's been my thing. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. Um, Sweet. Yeah. So what are you most looking forward to? What races, what experiences uh, with the team coming up this summer? What's getting you really excited? Yeah, for sure. Well, um, you know, the team kind of kickoff race is uh, Mission Crit in April. But prior to that, we're going to, um, or I'll be at NABS uh, in Sacramento, probably with Danny and, um, you know, maybe other riders. I'm not sure about that yet. But um, we're kind of unveiling the team bikes at NABS and then unveiling the team at uh, Mission Crit. So, you know, that's going to be the, the first kind of team-related event uh, of the season. But, um, yeah, I'm really excited about that because, you know, in addition to the team bikes, I get to bring uh, a couple of other bikes, you know, from um, building currently Mitch, a new bike, who's a graphic designer for that. And we're working on some really exciting stuff with, uh, new paint um, techniques and really stuff that's not traditionally found in in the bicycle world. Have you been able to go to any of these races before, or this is going to be kind of your first experience? Um, this will be kind of the first. Um, I've I've been to fixed crits, but uh, but never mission crit or red hook or anything kind of big. Yeah, uh, big name. Yeah, crits. So that'll be a fun experience. Yeah. It seems crazy. I actually haven't been out either. <laughs> well, and I think to, to, to act as a, as a team manager and a mechanic at the same time, it's going to be an interesting, interesting role to play, but, um, I think it'll be good. Is, is there anything else you wanted to touch on before we head out? Um, I think everything's, everything's good. Um, I really appreciate it. Yeah, where can people find you? Um, yeah, well, you can follow my Instagram page, which is at Pratt Frameworks, and um, my website, prattframeworks.com. And you can also come to NABS in March <laughs> and uh, see me there. Or you can come to any of our races, and I'll be at, I think, all of those. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll be... We'll be going to Mission Crit and uh, Red Hook Brooklyn and Milan, um, Red Bull Last Stand, Bone Machine Crit. We might go to the Netherlands. You never know. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah. 
I've had those guys on the podcast too, and their races seem really fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Thanks again so much for doing this. Yeah, well, thank you. I really appreciate it. All right, that does it for another episode of Save the Track Bike. This episode was sponsored by The Bicycle Broker. Go to SaveTheTrackBike.com for all info. And the music is Side Girl by Vitamin Pets.